most used in Africa. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Christian and uh, the organizing committee for inviting me to come and speak at this meeting on surveillance of viral noses in Africa. Our work is actually inspired by the knowledge that zoonosis cannot be eradicated because of the massive reservoirs they have. Sometimes we know these reservoirs, sometimes we don't. And also, the increasing nature of emergence and reemergence of these diseases, such as was the case in 2014 of Ebola virus disease in West Africa. This burden actually impacts negatively on response and provision of public health services. Now, the irony of all this is that Africa has the least capacity in terms, of for, in terms of response, preparedness, and control of these diseases. Now, to change this status quo, Hokkaido University and the University of Zambia we signed an MOU to carry out research activities through training, as you can see. First, we had to build the capacity, laboratory capacity, and also field capacity to conduct these research activities. So we had to improve uh, BSL2 laboratories, BSL3, which uh, we have fixed, and as well as mobile on a port and track. We also have animal biosafe level two laboratory, and these are our capacities. Basically, we have, uh, uh, we can do serological as well as genomic based uh, 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 analysis. So we are able to actually move in the field and capture what we, could, we perceive as reservoirs and, uh, and do our work. Now, based on the vulnerability risk assessment and mapping in the nation, I will just uh, run you through some of the examples of the diseases, syndromically, that we are working on. So the first one is uh, on hemorrhagic fever uh, public health events. As you can see here, in red, these are countries which have been plagued with uh, outbreaks of hemorrhagic fever since 1976. All those in red, this is Ebola virus disease. You can see Zambia there in blue is surrounded by these countries. But there's also another something special there on Zambia. This is about the arena virus, a novel one, which we went, we, we uh, became known as Lujo. So considering that these hemorrhagic fever viruses, especially fetal viruses, the most probable reservoir is the bat. So we conduct uh, extensive, aggressive surveillance activities in bats. In Zambia, there is a peculiar phenomenon. In that part of the region, in central Zambia, where you can see that circle, and in red there, where I have said the host zone, this is the area which I previously showed in the last slide. So every year, more than uh, 10 million bats, like now, that is between uh, October and December, more than 10 million uh, migratory fruit bats, they actually uh, come to Zambia and congregate like what I've shown with those arrows. You can see those arrows. So these are coming from different parts of the continent up there. And Zambia becomes like a mixing ground where they actually socialize. So these are the bats 
These are the straw colored bats, Adlon Helvan. So we move in there and sample these bats. We carry out serological tests as well as uh, we look for various uh, RNA sequences. Wh what we have found, the first part in case of Adlon, is that these bats in that region which I've shown you, a small percentage of them, about 8%, have antibodies against all known species of Ebola viruses. Ebola Zaire, Sudan, Bundibugio, Resto, even Reston, as well as Thai forest. Now, you see later, this one is Rosetta's uh, fruit bat. It is a curved bat. We also conduct uh, research activities in the curves where we capture these bats and we have found antibody levels of up to 40% of Marburg against Marburg virus. Now, the interesting thing about this finding is that it's only on antibodies that we have found in these bats, both uh, migratory fruit bats and the resident fruit bats, but there is no uh, evidence of filovirus genome RNA. So antibody positive, but no uh, evidence of genome. Uh, the 2014 Ebola virus outbreak in West Africa has been described as uh, the most devastating of it all, uh, in 40 years. And it actually raised a lot of concern on preparedness. As you have heard, even uh, the last presenter mentioned the word in one sentence, preparedness, preparedness, and so forth. So there was need to actually uh, look for ways to develop diagnostic tests, rapid diagnostic tests for rapid detection to trigger early response. We have also developed quick Navi Ebola lateral flow based kit, uh, which can be tested on site. This is now, it can detect multiple species of Ebola virus. So this is Aire, Thai forest, and Bundibugio. We have also now worked on antibodies for Sudan. And these will actually be also included onto a kit. We are working with a company uh, Denka Seiken in Japan to actually do the product uh, development. And this kit is undergoing validation in the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, where we have seen working side by side with uh, RT-PCR, the results are in conformity. So at the University of Zambia, because of the background that we have and the experience and the expertise, the government has uh, actually given us the task to test for all Ebola uh, suspected samples in the country. We are the only ones who can do that, as you can see here. But we also, because of biosafety concerns, we do training, short training courses to the people, the, pr uh, the frontliners in the care uh, public health caregivers. Now, the next uh, example is the issue of avian influenza. There is a risk of incursion of avian influenza into Zambia. Uh, as you can see with those details in September, the birds actually fly from Europe and they actually leave. Uh, July, January, uh, around there, back to Europe. Obviously, depending on comparative basis of where, when it is comfortable and where there is food. And where do they come from? Central and Eastern Europe and Western Asia. A Palearctic as well as intra-African migrants. So those are the routes. Now, you can see Zambia is in both of those routes, the western side and the eastern side. So because of this risk, we conduct surveillance activities on avian influenza viruses 
in wild aquatic birds. We don't kill the birds, considering the fact that the these viruses replicate in the intestinal tract, we just collect the freshly dropped, uh, uh, the droppings. So far, we have isolated those uh, subtypes there, uh, but I should be quick to say these are non-pathogenic, uh, and also we have not isolated uh, in these birds the H5 or H7. Uh, these are the viruses that we have, the influenza viruses that we have isolated. Now, in 2008, there was a peculiar case of a hemorrhagic fever disease in a patient who we thought it was malaria. For 10 days, we treated, and the, the patient was just getting worse. Then we recommended that the patient is uh, evacuated for special specialist treatment outside the country. Later, that patient in South Africa, that's an eighth country, actually died. So it was, uh, it developed later that the nurse who was responsible for transferring the patient in the plane, the air ambulance, also fell sick and died. The nurse who was working in that isolated ward in South Africa also died. That's three people. The replacement nurse also died. So in total, four out of five people died out of this case. So we tested these samples for all pathogens, all known pathogens, all pathogens known to cause hemorrhagic fevers, and they all came out negative. And because we only have up to BSL-03, we couldn't go further. So we collaborated with the National Institute of Communicable Diseases in South Africa, as well as Atlanta CDC, and using their BSL-04, they managed to culture these tissues and came up with this, a virus. And this virus, they detected. It grew. It became known as Lujo. This is an arena, a, a novel arena virus. Lujo, Lu for Lusaka and Jo for Johannesburg, the two countries shared the virus because no single country wanted to share a dangerous virus. <laughs> so, because of the reason we are known for these arena viruses, we moved in and started uh, conducting surveillance activities in rodents. As you can see there, we have not isolated Lujo virus. But we have, uh, if you can see here, we have detected arena viruses, but these are not pathogenic and they are not Lujo. We have, also, we have named them Luna. So we are still looking, we are still hunting for Lujo. The question is, where is Lujo? Listening to uh, presentations by my colleagues yesterday, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And also, uh, what uh, Dr. Gallo said about hit and run and hide, I'd never heard about that. It could probably be hit and hide. So we also look for novel pathogens in bats in curves. And this effort has actually uh, enables, enabled us to detect a novel Nairo virus. This is of the family Bunaviri there. And this virus, we did pathogenicity tests. And you can see on the left here, this is a normal uninfected uh, mouse. And these ones, they showed hemorrhagic enteritis as well as white patches on the liver uh, and other you know, symptoms here. So, in summary, we found out that this mouse and this virus, this could be used, this could be a model for testing for this virus in uh, immunocompetent animals. We published this work in Nature Communications. Now, there's also a little bit of knowledge that we have on arbovirus infections in Zambia. This is based on uh, the lithosorology that has been done. So based on that, we have moved in 
to conduct a demotical uh, research of arboviruses in Zambia. Uh, we are looking at this in mosquitoes. And we're using uh, RT-PCR. We look at all those uh, using specific primers, flaviviruses, uh, chick, dengue, and so forth. We do virus isolation in mosquito uh, cells and mammalian cells. And for the first time, we have isolated the West Nile virus. So going forward, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to be part of uh, the GVN. We are an affiliate member of GVN. We want to develop collaborations and partnerships with other research and training institutions, mostly three things. Development of diagnostic tests, improvement of those that have already exist, and then surveillance to hunt for these reservoirs and pathogens, known or unknown. We should have the ability to actually identify the unknowns because, like in Africa, there are, ma there are many cases in hospitals where there are patients with fevers of unknown origin. So we should have the ability to actually identify what is it. Because you find there's everything in negative, but the patient is dying. And thirdly, to train, training, training. Short courses, at master, uh, also at master's level, PhD level, and postdoctoral level. We are already doing this. We have a World Bank funded uh, project. This is a center of excellence for infectious disease of humans and animals. This is for strengthening research on infectious diseases through training of qualified people at MSc and PhD levels. Now, this center and the University of Zambia as an affiliate member of the Global Virus Network, we are sponsored by University College Dublin and Hokkaido University. Uh, this, obviously, we are looking at the vision that this will synergize the mobility of scientists in Africa. Africa should not be a void. There is a lot of work to be done. This is required. This will better uh, enable us to better train virologists at MSc, PhD, and postdoctoral levels. Ultimately, the whole effort it will be to facilitate interactions with partners in Africa, which is critical to GVN's mission in preparing the world for future outbreaks of viral diseases. These are our partners as well as funders. Thank you very much.